There are two things we can learn from the gospel today. First is that the parents' responsibility towards their children. We see this in the gospel when Mary and Joseph searched for the young Jesus and found him in the temple. And Mary told Jesus, child, why have you treated us like this? Look, your father, and, your father and I have been searching for you in great anxiety. When our son Joseph was three years old, I worked in Indonesia and my family went with me. And one Sunday, as our um, routine, is we went to one of the malls in Jakarta. So if, you're, if you've been to Jakarta, it's the Sogo Food Mall in downtown Jakarta. And all of a sudden we noticed that our son was not with us. He was lost in the food court at the mall. So the rush of emotions, panic, fear, anger, panic, and again panic, just overwhelmed us. But thankfully, he came out from the other side and we rushed and got him. One can only imagine how much Mary or Joseph felt when they lost the Son of God. God entrusted our children to us and we are to take care of them. Our responsibility as parents is not to help them succeed in life. Let me repeat that. Our responsibility is not to help our children succeed in life. That is a secondary objective of us as parents. Our responsibility is to teach our children how to love God with all their heart, with all their mind, with all their strength. This is not the responsibility of the mother or of the teachers of sacramental preparation or teachers at Catholic schools it is not the responsibility of Father Dino. It's not the responsibility of Deacon Philip or anyone else. But it is the responsibility of fathers in families to pass on their faith to their children. Deuteronomy chapter 6 tells us that the fathers are supposed to teach their children how to love God with all their heart, with all their soul, and with all their minds. For, for single women, for single moms, you have, a single, you have a supernatural responsibility to be both father and mother to your children. And God appreciates that struggle that you have. But one thing to note is God will never abandon you nor forsake you. The second reading tells us we have boldness before God and we can ask for the grace we need for a single mom to be a father and mother to her child or children. God will give you that grace, so do not give up. The second thing we learn is from the first reading. Hannah gave her son to the Lord, or lent her son to the Lord, literally by leaving him at the temple to minister to the Lord. Our children are not our own. God gave us the responsibility to teach them to love God, which includes training them to do the Lord's will. The second reading tells us, See what love the Father has given us that we should be called children of God. Sadly, many people stop there and conclude that everyone is a, children, is a child of God. But many are mistaken because the next verse clearly tells us the reason the world does not know or does not know us is that it did not know him. A child of God knows his or her father in heaven. The second reading continues, Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. 
What we do know is this, when he is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. According to John, the child is someone who obeys the commandments of the Father and does what pleases him. I cannot be a child of God if I do whatever I want, even if it is contrary to what the, the Lord wills. The child does what pleases the Father. God disciplines us and forms us because we are his children. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 8 tells us, if we are not disciplined by God, we are illeg illegitimate children, or to literally use the words of the Dewey Rames Bible, it says, if we are not disciplined by God, we are bastards. To be a child of God, I must allow God to form me and discipline me. So how can I be a child of God if I do not know my father? How can I be a child of God if I do not accept his discipline? This is the second thing we learn from the readings today. Teach our children to allow themselves to be formed by God. Offer them to God because the safest place where they can be is in the hands of God. We may want the best for them, but God wants and can give them the best for them. When we are children, we li live in God's house, and the Psalm tells us, blessed are those who live in your house, O Lord. We are blessed not because we have millions of dollars to our name in our bank account, or we have many properties. We are blessed because we live in the house of God. We live in the life of the Lord. We live with God. If today was not Sunday, we will be celebrating the feast of St. Stephen. He is the first martyr of the church, and his death is recorded in the book of, uh, in the Acts of the Apostles in scripture. He was called to serve as a deacon and he gave up his life because he believed in the name of Jesus and he learned he loved others. Our life is not full if we do not love God or believe in Jesus Christ. And I want to speak with parents here who have done everything that they can, and yet their children have left the faith. Yes, God knows you are more con you're concerned about the salvation of your children, but the truth is God is also is more concerned of their salvation than we can ever be. Pray to the Lord, ask the Lord to take care of your children and lead them back to salvation. God always hears the prayers of mothers for their children's salvation. And God hears the prayers of the fathers for their children's salvation. We may not see the result in this life, but we have hope that we will see them in heaven. Offer them at this Mass and tell the Lord to take them as his child and discipline them. As parents, you still have that spiritual authority over them, even if they are adults. Also offer yourself to the Lord. Ask the Lord to help you forgive yourself. The second reading tells us, beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God and we receive from him whatever we ask. So come to God confidently with boldness. St. Therese of uh, um, Lisieux tells us that we have to approach God with boldness as a child approach her father. Do not be afraid to ask from the Lord 
God hears your cries for your children. He knows what he is doing. Also, pray to Saint Joseph as he protected the Holy Family, his wife Mary and Jesus. He also can protect your children and lead them to Jesus. He whom God chose to lead, to lead the incarnate Son of God and the all immaculate Mary in this life has power to intercede for your children. So to him who gives, who lives and reigns in heaven, be glory and honor forever and ever. Amen.